So the first podcast episode that I listened to on the Latino USA podcast is the one talking about American Dirt. Um, The podcast begins with an interview with um, Miriam Curva, who is a Chicana writer, um, who was asked to write a review on American Dirt by Miss Magazine. Uh, She read the book while on Thanksgiving break in Guadalajara, um, visiting family. Um, She describes being incredibly insulted by the racist novel. And then after she wrote her negative review, she received an email from the editors um, who said they would not publish her piece unless she changes it to a more positive review. Um, like, what the hell? Um, so upsetting. Isn't the point of a review to state your opinions honestly? Also, what ethnicity are these editors? Uh, does this influence their defense of Cummings' novel as the grapes of wrath of our time? And they don't want anything that counters this perspective. Um, also, Oprah's endorsement and saying she won't remove the book from her book club, um, but I'm like, how could she support a narrative that is not someone else's to tell, when those a part of the very culture she's writing about have felt used and appropriated, um, and especially since she is someone who believes in honoring people's narratives, how can she endorse this? Um, also, I feel like I should read this book to see for myself and form an opinion. Because I, as I was writing down notes while while listening, I felt very weird commenting on something I have no context on. Um, but I like also I don't want to support her by buying this book, so I don't know. Um, speaking of books and authors, the two. Latinx, Chicanx authors um, that I always liked reading, um, Sandra Cisneros and Julia Alvarez, their support of the book, that really hurt. Um, um, and seeing, and Sandra Cisneros seeing it as necessary, I don't know how I feel about that because I see her as one of the Chicanx people that fight for La Causa, uh, social justice, political activism, and I'm kind of disappointed in her, but the one that hurt me the most is Julia Alvarez, because one of my favorite books is her book In the Time of the Butterflies that speaks about political social justice. Um... And I wonder, what is it that they see in this book that aligns with their perception of social justice? Um, Also, the fact that Sandra says that because of Janine Cummings' name, she has more of a reach with an audience than if she had a Spanish surname. Um... That was upsetting and illuminating of how the idea of the white savior is so ingrained in marginalized communities. Um, The idea of this savior coming in and putting our narratives out there. Um, Yeah, I don't agree with that, but also I see her point because of the color of our skin. We have to work harder to gain an audience that will listen, but at what cost? How much do we have to be stigmatized and stereotyped at the hands of this white savior? Um, This is what upsets me if she says, and this is what upsets me about what Cummings says because they also interviewed her. Um, She says in her book, uh, author's note, she wishes that someone browner, I have a problem with that word, 
really makes me cringe. Um, then her had written it. Then why write it? For money. Uh, to make money and perpetuate stereotypes that are damaging to people who live the experiences of immigrating here. And the letter at the beginning of her book about giving a face to the faceless makes me cry when hearing how insulted Miriam was while reading it in the very culture it inaccurately depicts by playing into stereotypes. Um, so upsetting because stereotypes like these about narcos is one of the reasons people are afraid of visiting Mexico. I know like whenever my family and I would say, oh yeah, we're vacationing in Mexico, people are like so scared because they hear about how unsafe it is. Um, when they, and they just go to the touristy parts, but there's so much in the other parts that aren't the touristy, that are just so rich and vibrant, and the community aspect, and all the people conviviendo, and people late at night, just in the town square listening to music, the plazas, talking, and eating, and just such a laughter in community and the hospita hospitality that you do not see here in the U.S. Um, and the rich and cultural history too. Um, why doesn't she write about that if she had to write this narrative? Because is it because it won't sell in align with the impoverished, drug-torn, bloody, narco field in Mexico narrative that we see so much? Um, if you want to advocate for someone else's, don't pepper it. For someone else, don't pepper it. Per perpetuate stereotypes. How, as a society, can we begin to change the ways in which we contribute to stereotypes and have a conversation? Uh, does it take being curious and coming from that space rather than judgment and listening to media representation to form our biases or our basis too. Um, also the books claim that immigration did not become a matter of concern until 2013 is so untrue. Uh, it has always been an issue in the Mexican American history. If you had learned about the culture comings you were writing about, instead of playing into stereotypes, you would know this. Um, also, that comment tells me that you, Janine, are not an advocate for those whose voices you claim to want to raise because it's not coming from a place of advocacy. As someone who says they identify as white, with no experience or relatives who have experienced what you write about in your book, what gives you the right to tell this narrative? Um, you, Cummings was also accused of taking the words from Luis Alberto Urea's experiences in books. And this is sickening to me because this is a human experience that he lived. And to take that experience and dehumanize it is awful. And to have fellow writers and friends support that novel and endorse it, it must have been so invalidating for Luis, especially since it's hard road to be heard and taken seriously as a POC in the publishing community. I mean, <laughs> it's crazy to me that only 3% of the publishing industry is comprised of Latinx writers. How do we begin to change these numbers and like all aspects of careers because I'm sure there's other aspects that are just as alarming statistics and how do we get seen and be taken seriously enough to get into this room? Um, I also find it very sad that my response when Luis is telling a story about his road to becoming a published author, he, it took him 10 years to get the book that she 
stole words from publish. That is crazy. Um, but he said that they told him to change his name because it's a long name and Latino name, no one's going to care. Also, when they read, when they rejected his story, one of the people said, no one cares about Mexican kids. And my response to all of this was typical. So yeah, that's really sad that I do I come to expect it. Also, it tells me a lot about where my biases are. Um, then, <laughs> going back to when we heard from Janine, I was not amused at her not taking responsibility. Um, just own your actions, Janine. Um, her stating that she read and watched immigration stories for her research. Like, really? <laughs> Reading and watching? What about, um, I don't know, going out and interviewing people or experiencing what the people that you are writing about experience on a day-to-day -day basis? And then she's... Also, I want to know if she did that. And if she did, why didn't she include that more? Instead of playing the stereotype. Um, by just watching and reading, this is exactly how we get stereotypes and don't hear the narratives or, I don't know, see the real stories of the lives of the people and cultures you're writing about. But then she says, without much thought, and there was my answer, she didn't think about the Latinx voices and narratives that she was writing about. Um, she says, I don't want to explain anyone else's trauma, but like you did, and whether you are unaware of it or not, you need to take responsibility for your actions instead of playing la victima. Um, when Maria asked you to clarify who the we was in your author's note, you couldn't give a straight answer. And if you really want to be starting a dialogue and part of it, you need to be comfortable with that uncomfortable space. Um, so you are not an advocate. You are not holding space for the voices you are claiming to try and raise up. And quite frankly, after listening to you speak, me siento usada. Mi cultura y mi orgullo en mi cultura se siente barato. So, how does one read this with an open heart, Sandra? Because I'd really like to know.